I'm very proud and honored to have our guests and all of our guests, all of our guests. Everybody here, the VIP. Mm -hmm. I think I shared with you this morning that people that I called and that I invited to be a part of the program, there was no hesitancy at all on their part, but readily consented. And I know these people don't do that to everybody. And that made me feel good, feel humble, and very me to say, yes, I'll do it. And it didn't take them always to make up their mind. I said, well, maybe I've done something right. Pleasing to somebody. I guess uh, this afternoon, I've known him down through the years. As I said about Bishop Brazier this morning, and about Reverend Antiwine. We've had the opportunity of working together on some projects. And thank God I feel very comfortable in their presence, and I think they feel comfortable in my presence. And I just felt like I wanted them to be a part of this celebration. I, I just felt like that they would add so much, just their presence. I said to the minister when he came in, I said it jokingly, but with a fact. I said, inviting you here today, and I'm glad you came, that you were here, it created a lot of excitement. <laughs> Did I tell the truth? Well, that's all I'm interested in doing is telling the truth. A lot of excitement, but it's been very positive and been very good, very good. Uh, without any further ado, long preliminaries that say we work together on several projects and uh, we've gotten along well and we've got to learn how to rise above isms and get along with people who think differently than we do and people who look differently than we do what has been my philosophy with you, Ship, for the last five or six years? So we got to rise above what denominationalism. Yes, sir. Not denomination. I'm a Baptist. Gonna stay one. He know he ain't gonna change me. I'm not gonna try to change him. I'm gonna continue to be this. Yes, ain't no need to talk about opening my eyes. I'm going on to hit my hell, thinking like this. <laughs> Well, amen. Just be honest. And you know I'm not going to change him. He was a Baptist. So, what he is. But we got to rise above denominationalism. The other thing I said, we got to rise above what? Sexism. Not sex. And get that very clear. Sex is all right in this place. And I haven't reached the age yet, just do away with sex. <laughs> but rise above sexism, where we put women down and think that all they are good for is to go to bed. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen, lights. Yeah. It's the ism. Yes, sir. Sometime or another, we're going to have to rise above partyism. And some of us are still hooked up in there because some of us are Democrats, some of us are Republican, some of us are independent, and some of us are nothing. Yeah. That's the rise above it. Denominationalism, sexism, partyism, and what is the Raceism. Stop looking at color 
and look at character. Uh huh. I'm proud of Minister Louis Farrakhan for the work that he's doing. Why, Clavin, did you invite him? Because he's my brother. Why did you invite him? Because he's my friend. Why did you invite him? Because I want to. Listen to this, listen to this. Also, let me say this now, bring him on. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but I want you doing a lot of shooting while he's talking. Amen. Let him go ahead on and speak. I don't like to see cameras flashing all over and going on. But uh, we are very fortunate to have a man like this in our presence. And we can disagree without being disagreeable. Don't ever let people pick your friends. That's one of the worst mistakes you can make. Don't let them take that privilege from you. Make the charge pick your own friend. Because if they start to picking your friends, you wind up with no friend. Because the very one that pick your friend, they won't be your friend. You make that for yourself. I want you to stand and receive warmly, my friend. Minister Lewis Farrakhan, head of the nation of Israel. Allah, the Almighty God, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. We thank Him for all of His creation and we thank Him for all of His creatures. We thank Him for His prophets and for the scriptures which they brought. We thank him for Moses and the Torah. We thank him for Jesus and the Gospel. We thank him for Muhammad and the Quran. I give praise and thanks to him for his intervention in our affairs and raising up in our midst a divine leader, teacher, and guide the man who taught me religion the honorable Elijah Muhammad I greet all of you my dear and wonderful brothers and sisters with the greeting words of peace we say it in Arabic assalamu alaikum but in English it means peace be unto you To my dear brother, friend, and great servant of God, and to all of you who are present today, the Reverend Clay Evans and the members of ARC, what a wonderful name. As the storm clouds of this world's destruction gather, we need an ark. And we need a man to call us into the ark. The ark was so simply built. Some scholars say it was a very crude ship. In the Holy Quran, it says it was put together with planks and nails. But it was floating on in our sight as a mercy. 
no matter how simple things look when God is in it no one can destroy it we are gathered here today in this convention men and women who teach and preach to our people in particular and to all people in general but we are gathered together in a very perilous time yes, as the scriptures tell us know that in the last days perilous times shall come and it talks about the characteristics of the people in the last days that men shall be heady, high-minded, traitors, boasters, treacherous. They should be lovers of themselves. They should be talking about God but denying the power. We're in such a time. This is Satan's world. <clears throat> And Satan desires to take down all who believe in God. John the Revelator said, The devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, for he knows he has but a short time. When Satan's time is short, that means he will work doubly hard to destroy the house that is supposed to be the house of God. Yes, sir. Satan's desire is to make everyone in the house unworthy of him whom they claim to believe in. This is why there's such a need for prayer and praise and proper preaching. All right, all right. Not just preaching, but prayer sincere and praise, but proper preaching. Proper preaching is preaching that is consistent with the time and the nature of things so that in the hour when Satan attacks the house and the people of God that your preaching constantly keeps the servants of God fortified. I'm so happy to be here with my dear brother and to be in church <laughs> because I call myself a Muslim but I am a Christian too and uh, Reverend Clay Evans is not the only Baptist in the house. <laughs> Because I too feel that I have been baptized in a very special way. And I want to share this with you in the few moments that I have. This is such a serious subject. And our people are so in need of prayer. And so in need not to be praised but so in need to praise and they will be made fit for the kingdom if they get the proper preaching for the proper preaching will revive it will restore proper family life and it will restore church life and it will keep us reminded of spiritual values 
in a world that has gone materially crazy. Yes. Yeah. 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 All of us believe in the return of Christ. And the scripture teaches us that on his return or before his return, there would be certain signs of his return. All right. And he warns us not to be heedless of the signs. Yeah. Practically every sign that points to the return of Christ has already been fulfilled. So his return is imminent. But the question is, what will he find when he returns? And will we be in his favor? Because the scripture doesn't say he comes to preach. Hello. The scripture says he comes to execute judgment. And that judgment will begin first in the house of God. So just as it was when Moses went away to the mountain and came back, he first snatched his preacher, his representative, Aaron and asked him, what were you doing while I was gone? Look at the condition of my flock. Aaron, why did you set up a false god while I was gone? Did you not expect me to come back? What you say? So it is today. We who are preachers are in a dangerous position because handling the word of God is nothing to be played with and the salvation of the people is nothing to be played with. Preaching Jesus Christ is not big business. Preaching Christ is serious. Because how we handle the word of God can sentence people to death or prepare them for eternal life. I know that's right. Talk, talk, I know that's right. On his return, how will he find his house? Is it really his house or has it been taken over? Because Satan is angry because he has but a short time and he's got everybody else, so why not attack the house of God? It reminds me of the book of Job. Well. When the servants of God, sons of God, came to present themselves before God and Satan came also with them. Satan was hanging out with the sons of God. But the sons of God were not able to recognize Satan. They had been blinded somewhat. So when they got to the, uh, to the God, he spoke and asked, Whence cometh thou, Satan? I imagine the sons of God were shocked. What? Satan here too? <laughs> and he said, Yes, I'm here. Whence cometh thou? I'm coming from up and down to and fro in the earth, seeking what I may devour. I've eaten up everything. I've devoured all your servants. Now listen, as a Christian, we are supposed to be a part of the body of Christ. We should have been consumed by Christ to become a part of his body. Yeah. But Satan said, I've been walking up and down to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. Yeah. Because some who think they're the body of Christ have already been eaten up by Satan. <laughs> some who think they're in the house of God have transformed the house of God into a house of said? demons. Yeah. Oh Why? Because the prayer 
is not right. It's, it's made to be seen of men. The praise is not right. Yeah. It's to be seen of men. Therefore, the preaching is not proper yeah. and is not saving souls, but it's preaching for vain purposes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why the house of God stands in need of revival yeah. and restoration. Yeah. Why are you talking about revival and restoration? If you were what you're supposed to be, you wouldn't need revival because Jesus is a constant reviver. If we were what we were supposed to be, we wouldn't need restoration for he is the restorer. And if you're one with him as he is one with his father, then you're in constant renewal, constant revival, because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, though you are dead, yet shall you live. What's happening in the church that it needs revival? What's happening in the house of God that it needs restoration? What's happening to the men and women of God that they're preaching is not saving souls but condemning them to death and to eternal fire. On his return, they said we will see him coming in the clouds of heaven having great power. And they that pierced him will wail because of him because he's not coming to preach that's what we were supposed to be doing he's coming to judge well as a spiritual person who has charge of a flock I would really like him to be pleased with me. If we as his pastors are not making any demands on his flock, that we conform to the standard that he has given us, then we are not, we are not having a good prayer. And we're not really worthy of any praise because our preaching is not proper. <laughs> Everybody in the world today said they love Jesus. It wasn't that way 2,000 years ago. But how much do you love him? See, if you love him, you do as he directs. That's right. If you love him, you have a personal relationship. If you love him, he's always in your thoughts. If you love him, before you do anything, you ask, would he be pleased? If you love him, you die, that he may live in you. Two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. I think it's in the book of Galatians. Paul couldn't leave the people because Christ was not yet formed in them. Well, if Christ is formed in you, then God is formed in you then you become a little Christ with power. You're not powerless in his name. But if you don't have power to condemn sin, if you don't have power to correct your own evil, if you don't have power to inspire men and women to change in their life, then Christ is not a power in you. Go ahead. All right, all right, all right. 
fix that. Fix See, that. we got his name. We, we know his name. We know a lot about him from the scripture. But I'm talking about to be him. I ain't talking about to talk about him. I'm talking about living Jesus so that he becomes so real that when the people see you, they see him. When they hear you, they hear him. Then you don't have to talk about restoration. Everything around you is restored. You don't have to talk revival because everything around you is revived. You don't have to talk about spiritual values because you got them. You live them. And you don't have to talk about family life because you got it. Yeah. Our Father. Yeah. Let's start with Father. Yeah. We know that the black man is a destroyed man. He's not a good father. He's not a good husband. We're not good brothers to each other. Why? Because we really disconnected from our father. <laughs> you see, we talk about Jesus. <clears throat> yes, he's unique. Yes, he's matchless. Yes, he's incomparable, but don't use his birth as an excuse. Right. That's it. That's it. Because when they asked him, Master, would you teach us how to pray? He said, yes, pray on this wise. Not my father. Yes, sir. Our father. Yes, sir. Well, if the father of Jesus is your father, well, yes, sir. All right, all right. and the father made Jesus so special, why aren't you? What you say? Come on now. Come on, come on. Are we gonna talk right? Our father. Right. You're right. Our father. If he, if he's our father, then Jesus is our elder brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the same essence that's in Jesus is in you, is in me, is in her, is in all of us. Right. And that's why the disciples said, "How can you say you love God whom you have never seen?" and hate your brother whom you see every day. Why did the master say, inasmuch as you have not done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you have not done it also unto me? It is because the same thing that you praise in Jesus is buried in every one of those human beings that you see out there lost. So you got what to do? Yeah, yeah. Pastor, it ain't just staying in the church no, no. shouting. Come on, come on. You say you saved? Come on. How can you be if they are not? All right. If you say you see, aren't you responsible for the blind? All right, now. Then don't tell me about your righteousness all right, all right, all right. and your people are dying in sin and you walk by them to get here today. We got a lot of work to do. The greatest men and women in this country right now are the men and women of God. Not the president, not the governor, not the mayor, although we like to, you know, be seen with them. I had a meeting last night with the governor. I, I just came back from the White House. <laughs> As though that's supposed to make the flock happy because you was at the big house. With the big Satan. With the big Satan. <laughs> when you got fellowship with Christ, who is big after that? All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My, my, my. Good food. Good food. 
we're talking good words. But we are far from living the good life. And so I'm afraid that on his return, we might be some of those saying, Lord, Lord. And he will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I know you not. I don't, I don't want to be in that shape. I'm literally terrified of the Christ <clears throat> because he intends to destroy this world. He don't come back <clears throat> with an olive branch. No, no, no. The book said he came back at the head of 10,000 and he had a sword in his hand and it was dripping with blood. Isaiah the prophet saw him coming, treading the wine press alone. Talk, Minister. And if you ever seen a wine press, in the old days it was a big, huge vat where they put the grapes in it. Yeah. And you'd wash your feet and wash your legs, and you would get in and, and tread yes. the grapes down until yeah. your garment was red yeah. with the juice of the grape. Yes. They saw him coming, treading the wine press alone. Treading the wicked down yeah. under his foot. America is under divine judgment, even as we speak. Talk, talk, minister. She's a great country. The greatest on earth. But she's not righteous. And she's not righteous. Because there are no preachers yes. that will condemn her evil without fear. How can you be of Jesus Christ and afraid to speak his word? Talk, talk, yes, How can you be of Jesus Christ all right, all right. and refuse yes, to stand up for his righteousness? And let everything and anything go on in the house of God. And you wink your eye as though you saw nothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Take your time. Take your time. Yes, sir. The book said he don't want fornicators in the kingdom. I didn't say it. He said it. Yeah. He don't want adulterers talk, in the talk, kingdom. Talk, talk, talk. He don't want effeminates in the kingdom. He don't want liars in the kingdom. Well, then, if we want to be a part of the kingdom, don't you think we got some straightening up to do? And how in the world can the people straighten up if the pastors don't straighten up? Yeah. We are the shepherds. Shepherd. Yeah. And if the shepherd ain't right, how can the people be right? Preaching Jesus is big business today. We can ride nice cars. We can wear nice suits. Wear fine shoes. We live from the good of the people. Because the people want God. And if they hear God's word coming out of our mouth, they don't feel there's nothing too good for us. That's right. All right. But some of us get carried away with the material things. Right. And we want more car, more home, more diamond, more fur. Well, that's fine if you're doing the work. The shepherd is worthy of his hire. He who treadeth down uh, the corn is worthy of his oats. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But let's not make preaching big business. Yeah. Yeah. That we out of vanity compete with one another. Yeah. This one got a big church. He's seen all over the, the world. I'm going to be just like him. Why? Because I want what he got. 
I don't want God. I don't want Jesus. I don't want righteousness. I want what he got. So when I get a big church and a fine car, I can lay back now because I got what he had. I may have more followers than him, so I boast in my followers. But I have made one of them right. I've become a wicked husband. Bringing in no fruit. See, this is a sobering message. I'm not talking to you alone. I'm talking to myself. Because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Paul said, the Jew and the Gentiles, they're all under sin. There's none righteous, no, not one. What do I look like compromising with the world? This is why the world don't like Farrakhan. I'm not trying to be loved by them. I want to be loved by him who is on his way. <laughs> I have the good things of life, but I don't have them because that's all I'm seeking. Yeah. I'm trying to make people better. Yes, sir. And that's your job, Reverend. Yes, sir. Make people better. If you find them in sin, clean them up. Yes, sir. If you find them wrong, encourage them to do right. And encourage yourself to be an example of the righteousness that you preach. <gasps> help us, help us. We can't run through all the women in the church. I'm sorry. But I have to tell what God has put on my heart. I don't have no notes. Is that you can't leave the women alone. Yes, sir. If the women come seeking God and you're not Him, take them to God. Yes, yes, Make them decent. Yes, Don't come in the house of God with a skirt on up by your hips. We don't want to see your thighs. This ain't no sex show. What's wrong? with us preachers we don't make our women act right do right dress right you think Jesus would be happy looking up in your thighs you come to church with your bosom all out I ain't no baby I ain't looking for no milk Church become a fashion house now. Yes, Spend your time down at the water tower or some other fine building to come to church looking fine and fly. For what? Is that what Jesus want? Mm. No. Mm. The sons of God came to present themselves before God. Yeah. Yeah. And Satan came also with them. Also with them. <laughs> <laughs> Whence come it thou? I've been walking up and down, to and fro. Seeking whom I may devour. Well, the God knew he had devoured the sons of God. He never asked Satan about one of them. He said, have you considered my servant Job? He had already eaten it. He said, I got one. Thank you, sir. I got one you can't get. Yeah. And Satan said, oh, yeah, I get him too. Come on, come on here. You got that hedge around him, but remove that hedge, and I'll make him curse you to your face. He said, let's make a deal. It's not behind what's behind the first door, the second door, the third door. Let's make a deal. Yeah. He said, I'm going to remove the hedge and do anything to him you please. 
just don't take his life. Yeah, yeah. See, Job was a sign of Jesus. Yes, sir. Satan had devoured everything. everything. Have you considered my son? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. I got one that ain't going to bow. And because one is not going to bow, all that come under that one will be alive. As by one man, sin entered into the world, and death came also by sin. So by one man shall all be made alive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so, yes, sir. And so, beloved, I am, I am inspired because I want the pastors to know I, I love you. You help it, you help it. I love you. And I know that there is no salvation for our people unless the preachers stand up strong. I know this. They've devoured everything and everybody. They got our leaders in their hip pocket. They tell our leaders where to go, how high to jump. We've become prostitutes for a few dollars. No pastor, no preacher of Christ should be on the take for nothing. Never lose your independence. You got to be able to rebuke the president when he's wrong. You got to be able to rebuke the governor, and the mayor, and the attorney general, and everybody in political office. The preacher got to be clear. I know you are. He have his hands tied. And that's why the world has gone to hell, and Satan is in power, not only in the world, but he's crept in to the house of God, unawares, bringing in strange doctrine and teaching. Now preachers are marrying lesbians and, and homosexuals in the house of God. Come to us. Work on it now. Work on it. Work on it. Hollywood takes your great actors, Denzel, and make a Philadelphia story. Not just to glorify the sickness of AIDS, but to make homosexuality acceptable. So that you become afraid to speak about it. Evil has been made fair seeming. And so our prayers have to be made more sincere. All right, all right. When the baby came from its mother's womb into a new environment, its first prayer was its cry. And that cry was not duplicitous. It wasn't insincere. It was frightened in a new environment. And it cried. That prayer, which is a cry, is universal. And that cry grows as the mind of the child grows into supplication. The child knows God through the mother. Mommy, I'm wet. Mommy, I'm hungry. Mommy, I need. Mommy, God is acting through you, mother. The prayer of the child is answered by you. All right, all right. Father goes out and works hard, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> and if father don't have a job, Father can't walk around aimless on the corner. 
because we got responsibility. But we've lost creativity, so we don't know how to create a job yeah. for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we in the ministry are not showing our men Definitely. how to do for themselves. All right, all right. But the father works, brings the money, so that mother can answer the prayers of the child. All right. But mother and father have another kind of prayer and supplication. They call out in the quiet of their rooms to the Lord of creation to help them to provide for their family. God answers prayer. This whole universe is like the breast of a female. Come on, teacher. When the baby pulls on the breast of the mother, as long as mother is doing right by herself, something is there for the baby. I like it. I like it. And as long as you are right with God, you can pull on the universe. And it will not withhold its blessings from you. So if you're poor, raggedy, and hungry, it's nobody's fault but your own. You better check out how you connect it. So in conclusion, God does not care about your blood family. Well, that's your family. But Christ came into the world to make a new family. Uh -huh. A family greater than blood. Right. Yes, sir. A family united by spirit. Yes, sir. That's why the church is so important. Every church is important. Yes, sir. Not as a business. No, all right. No, no. But every church that handles the word of God properly takes men and women and makes a new family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A better family yes, sir. than the family of the womb. But this is a family that comes out of the womb of Christ's suffering, his passion is what made us brothers. Boy, that's something. That is something. That is something. And if we, as his servants, <clears throat> not willing to suffer, we don't want no hurt in our lives. Let's play it safe. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go with the flow. Yeah, watch this. Watch this. See, they want Farrakhan in the mainstream. I don't want to be in no stream. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to go over Jordan. All right. All right. A river. See, I don't need no stream. I don't want to be in the mainstream. All the wicked is in I that shit. Don't count me with your foolishness. I will never, never compromise a principle of truth for no friendship with the world. I'll go to God alone because I didn't come in the world with no twin. And even if I had a twin, we didn't come the same time. One came before the other. Yeah. So if I could come in the world by myself with God delivering me, then I can walk this earth by myself with God. I don't need friendship if that friendship will take me to hell. <laughs> Some of us, don't want to be built. We don't want to be scorned. Go 
We want to be praised by the wrong people. I would not mind a commendation from the mayor. I would not mind a common, uh, 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 some commendation from the governor. But if I got to compromise my principles to get a key to your lousy city, I would rather say that there's 12 gates to the city that I want to be a part of. <laughs> Let's go back home to our churches and let's create a family in Christ. Everywhere you look, you want to see him. You want to see him reflected in the men, reflected in the women, reflected in the children. Then that's a church with power to save. Then you want to go out in the world with that power. Like the master did, go out in the highways and the byways. Tell the people in the church, don't come alone. Stop by and grab somebody and bring them to service with you Sunday morning. I'm tired of seeing you telling me that's your seat. I paid for this. Get up, get up off my seat. I'm the mother of the church. Well, if you're the mother, produce some babies. Yes, up, yes, up, yes, up. Yes, Be glad to get up out your seat and give it to a new one coming yeah. in the door. That's right, that's right. Stand on the wall if you have to and let the new one sit down and become exposed to the word. Come on now. The mosque is full, so what? Every house of God should be full to running over. And when we meet each other in the street, we shouldn't be saying, oh, that's a Muslim, that's a Christian, that's a Baptist, that's a this. We should see the spirit of the living God moving in his people. And when we meet each other, we know each other. How do you know me? Not from Time Magazine. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yes, sir, yes, sir. How do you know me? You know me by the Spirit. I don't come before you with notes because I really don't need any. God has written the notes on the heart. And when a man is of God and from God, and is baptized in the spirit of God. He just has to open his mouth. And that's why the master said, don't take no thought about what you're going to say yeah. in that hour. Open up your mouth and I'll speak for you. And so my dear and beloved pastors, and to my big brother, the Reverend Dr. Clay Evans, <laughs> A man I love and admire, and every time I'm sometimes flipping my dial and I catch his service, I can't turn my dial. That's right, that's right, that's right. If I see Reverend Thurston, I can't turn my dial. If I see Bishop Brazier, I can't turn my dial. I love good preaching. Yes, sir. Because it's good preaching that waters my soul. Yes. I'm listening for God, and when you speak, I'm listening to hear him tell me something yeah. that will help me be a better servant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need each other, family. That's right. That's it. I'm under great trial now. Because there are those who fear the truth. And they're so afraid of Farrakhan because I will not bow down. All right, all right. So they have a fiery furnace for me. And I've been in it for a long time, but one like unto the Son of Man is in there with me. 
keeping the flames from burning me. Yes, sir. Some of you worry about me. I think you ought to worry about yourself. And I'm safe. You think they're going to do something to me, but I'm telling you, I'm safe. Yeah, buddy. You know why I'm safe? Because my refuge is in him. And I run to his bosom and curl up in his bosom because I know they can't get me there. Yeah. I know they're after me, but they can't get me there. Yeah. They're angry with me because I dare to criticize them for their evil done. I can't help it. If you are from Jesus, then you must reprove the world of sin and of judgment because it didn't believe in him. Right, right, right. Come on. That's right. That's right. Amen if you can. The Jews don't believe in Jesus. All right, all right now. Talk to me. They have not accepted him as Messiah, nor have they even accepted him as a prophet. Therefore, the New Testament don't even count with them. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That is right. Yes, sir. All right. Go ahead. That's right. Then. This Bible say in the book of Revelation, those who say they are Jews and are not, That's right. That's right. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. I am a Jew. Yes. Yes. And you are a Jew. Spirit, yeah. The true Jew, Paul said, is not by the circumcision of the male organ, but the true Jew is not the Jew outwardly, but the Jew inwardly by the circumcision of the heart. I'm a Jew because my heart has been circumcised. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a Jew. I want to be chosen of God. Yes, sir. I'm a Jew. Yeah. Yes, sir. So how can I be anti-Jew and a Jew at the same time? <laughs> they say Jesus was a Jew. That's right. That's right. Come on, talk to That's me. Right. Yeah, yeah. But when Jesus met the Jews, he had a controversy with them. In the book of John, the eighth chapter, Jesus said to the Jews, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And the Jews said to Jesus, how come you say I shall be made free when we have never been in bondage to any man? Then the Jews said, we are Abraham's seed. And Jesus answered, saying, well, if you are Abraham's seed, you will do the works of Abraham. They said, God is our father. They said, Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth from God. He said, but I know you. You are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you shall do he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning Jesus the scripture said was a Jew but he was not that kind of Jew he was a Jew to open up a new door that all could be chosen that nobody could say I'm the chosen by myself but all could be chosen if you would just be circumcised of the heart. I'm going to close, pastors. I'm going to close on this word of circumcision. The male organ is the instrument of life. Teach, teach, dog. And when the foreskin uh -huh. of the male organ is not 
circumcised. All right, all right. It makes it difficult for it to be clean. Yeah. Talk to us. So cutting the foreskin away from the male organ allows it to be constantly washed so that disease in the secret place will not multiply. So that when that instrument enters where it was made to enter to produce life, disease doesn't come along with it. Teach, minister. What you say? So it is with the heart. Well, and this is why when you see pictures of the master, you sometimes see him with his heart, his chest open, and his heart exposed because he had no secrets. The heart is the secret place where all the thoughts of men are conceived. It is like the male organ. It is a secret part that only God knows the secrets of the heart. Come on here, come on here. People of God can play God, can play righteous, but as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if the heart is not washed constantly, then the word speaks spoken from a diseased heart will ill affect the people who hear the word of God. So when Paul said the Jew is not the Jew outwardly, but the Jew inwardly by the circumcision of the heart, the word of Jesus Christ cuts away the foreskin. It opens up the man to confess his sins. Yeah. (laughs) Say it, say it, teacher. And if the pastors would go in their secret place and talk to God and confess our faults, he already knows them, but we have to confess them openly. And let him wash us. Wash us. Yeah. As Jesus said, wash and be clean. Yeah. He ain't just talking about washing your body. Wash the secret place yeah. where all the vanities and the lusts and the vain imaginations wow. start poisoning the word of God. So we preach for applause. We preach to see the old lady in the back who's, who wants Jesus jump up and run to the front and fall out. We preach for people to say how wonderful we are that we preached and left them in the same condition that we found. But you see, when you preach right, you prick the conscience. It may not be considered your best sermon. That's right. Because the church may get a little quiet. You see, because I'm touching something in you today that needed to be touched, and I'm making you reflect on yourself and reflect on how, when he comes, how he's going to find you, how he's going to find me, how he's going to find us. So preacher, purify the heart Mm, and let the word of life come through. The organ has to stand up. And so must we stand up for Christ. Would you sing it? Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. You soldiers of the cross. Well then, stand up. Stand up. A soldier of the cross. Lord have mercy. Stand up. Even if the world don't like it, stand up, preacher. That's right. Don't preach no watered down gospel. Preach it straight. Call it like it is in the name of God, and He will touch the people's hearts. Stand up. Soldiers of the cross. A pastor came to the house and said, Farrakhan, you on the cross? I say, Yes. 
I said, but being on the cross is what raises others to consciousness. <laughs> I said, the more I suffer, the more people get angry and say, why are they doing this to the brother? I know the brother. I know the brother's not like that. So let's all get our cross. Yeah. All right. Must he bear the cross alone? And all the world go free? There's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for me. So don't worry about the crown. Grab your cross. The crown don't come before the cross. The crown come after the cross. Grab your cross. Stop being a safe preacher. Preach like the master preach and they'll buke you. They'll scorn you. They'll persecute you. They'll revile you. They'll say all manner of evil against you falsely, but rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. So did they, the prophets that were before you, so pray and give a proper praise. And let's have some proper preaching. And let's revive the house of God everywhere we go. Let's make the church alive again. Make it the center of our community. Help the men and the women to come back to family values. And you can't have a family unless God is the head. Christ is the head. Then father under Christ. Then woman under man. Then children under mother and father. But if the woman want to be the boss and the father want to be the mother, <laughs> and we in trouble, we in trouble. <laughs> Every woman will submit to a man who got Christ as his head. That's right. yeah. So if you got Christ as the head, then be the head in yeah. your house. That's right. And woman conform. And let the children conform to that's, righteous that's right. parents. Yeah. Righteous. Yeah. Then we got strong family values. Yeah. Yeah. God bless us all. God yes, bless Dr. Clay Evans and all. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Minister. Minister. I don't have much of a vocabulary. Let me say to you, I, I don't know how to express a man. Awesome. You're just out of sight. What you've done for us today. Yes, sir. Words will never express it. How much we appreciate that yes, for you to come. And I've heard as much gospel yes, out of you today as I've ever heard from anybody. anybody. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? A lot of people, can Farrakhan preach? Does he, does he preach the gospel? Does he preach Jesus? He done it today. And he's done it with conviction. You know, those other little idiosyncrasies or whatever they may be, it ain't worth talking about. Man, man, man. And you know, I've been in this a long time. And the way you have preached here today, yes, you have challenged us. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, no. It had to be the Spirit of God. 
You can call it out like anything you want. I ain't gonna fall out with you about that. No, you call him anything you want to Yes, sir. I ain't that small. And some of you came here today out of curiosity, sir. Yeah, yeah. It ain't but a, a few folks. Some of you wonder, what was he going to do? Why did I invite him? And, and all of that kind of thing. And I want you to really pray for him. And don't let the media and other folks turn us against one another. a little bit what it means to be ostracized. Not, not like you being persecuted right now. Not like you being criticized and crucified. But I know what it means, man. To have your own folks turn their back on you. Yes, sir. I've been put out of the conference. Mm-hmm. Been talked about. And many times the people that talk about, they don't really know you. I, 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 I've had to say that people don't know you, Farrakhan. They don't know you. They just know of you. And I don't want to get into it right now, but they said the same thing as relate to Jesse. Many people, I don't care what the media say, Lord. Don't let the media turn you against Jesse. Don't let the media turn you against Farrakhan. <laughs> We got some leaders out there doing a good job. A good job. This is a wonderful man here. I don't call you. We maybe see each other maybe twice a year. But I know if I need you. And I really want you to feel the same way about me and that the doors of this church is open to you. I make the decisions here, along with the Lord. Amen. And if you need somebody to pray with you, I'm available for that. Want to come here to speak anytime, want to invite this church there, or whatnot, we are available. I don't have to do that. Yeah, I, I, I mean that. I mean that. We got to stop. Come here, Janetta. We got to stop uh, killing each other. Yes, sir. Criticizing each other. It's just a shame how we do our leaders. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I'm going to do that. Always got two or three people around me. Who helped me to think. Yeah. Miss Lucille, and she's passing the torch on to, uh, to Jenny. And uh, now he didn't mean a while ago that he doesn't want you to be concerned about him or to pray for him when he made the statement, you know, like Reverend Jesse, uh, Jackson, like Reverend Charles Jackson said this morning about Jesus said, don't weep for me, but weep for himself. And, and Minister Farrakhan made a similar statement. You have to be concerned about yourself, God. But he needs our prayer. He's not arrogant. He's not that time to lift it up to, don't, 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 I want you praying for me. No, 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 no. No, 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 we need that, we need that. And we are going to do it right now. I want all the ministers to gather down to the front. Just stay here where you are, but all of the ministers in the building yeah, yeah. and whatnot come down towards the front. River Maid. Oh, oh. River Meeks. He 
feet follow right along the same trail that you always along this one. As if y'all, you sure that y'all, oh, he didn't have no script, but y'all was talking, I guess, to the same Lord, huh? I mean, he talked to us, Reverend Meeks. Same, same of them. I mean, y'all challenged us, minister. Let me use another expression. Y'all gave us hell. And we need somebody to give us hell. Yes, sir. Till we act right. Till we act right. And he said, what kind of church is the Lord going to find when he come back? Addie, if you can pray, if you can, if we can give her a mic, I want Reverend Addie Wyatt to. From prison, from the dead, from the dead, Reverend Mays. Are you all right? Now tonight at 8 o'clock, Reverend Don Parson will be preaching. And every tongue, one day I'm gonna confess that Jesus, 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 Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 